in the real world, in your own work, you don't have to do this. The most important thing is that you're, that you're remaining consistent when reporting and interpreting your results. You would not have to present both bar graphs in a future report or uh, publication. All right, so the command to perform simple effects analysis is quite simple. The command itself is contrast, sex at pints, and then we also want to get the uh, Bonferroni comparisons. So you want to include M compare Bonferroni. Now what this command is doing is essentially fitting two one-way ANOVAs. However, it's using the mean square residual from the previous ANOVA model itself. When we write out this contrast command um, in this way, with sex at pints, we're telling Stata to give us the simple effects for sex at each level of pints. So basically we're asking, do males and females differ at zero pints, two pints, and four pints? All right, when we run this command, we get uh, quite a bit of output here. With this method, some of this output, in fact, is a bit redundant. So the first table um, up top is the actual simple effects analysis. In the first column here, we can see that Stata is giving us the result for zero pints, two pints, and four pints. For each uh, simple effect, the degrees of freedom is one. And the degrees of freedom here come from the independent variable sex. because that's essentially the, the comparison that we're making. We're not looking here to see if zero is different from two or if it's different from four. We wanna know if males and females differ at zero, if they differ at two, and if they differ at four. So the degrees of freedom for this example is going to be one for each of these simple effects because we have two levels of sex, so two minus one is one. And the denominator degrees of freedom is the degrees of freedom residual from above. And when you report the results of the simple effects, you will have to use these degrees of freedom. Okay, for each effect, we also have an F ratio, as well as an associated p-value. And in fact, Stata prints two p-values. It prints um, an unadjusted p, as well as a Bonferroni adjusted p. Because these are secondary analyses after an omnibus ANOVA, we do want to adjust for that error rate. So we're going to interpret the Bonferroni p-value. And for each of these simple effects, we'll compare against a p of 0.05 to, to determine significance. Okay, so for this first line, the p-value is 0.53, which means that there is a non-significant simple effect at zero pints. In other words, there is no difference in attractiveness ratings provided by male raters or female raters after zero pints of alcohol. Similarly, at two pints, um, the p-value here is exactly one, which is very much non-significant. So again, at two pints of alcohol, males and females do not differ in how they rate attractiveness. And perhaps unsurprisingly, the p-value at four pints is significant. Here, p equals 0 0.0001, so you would write out p is less than 0 0.001. So here you would conclude that males and females do differ in how they rate attractiveness after consuming four pints of alcohol. If you're to run the simple effects using this method, you can essentially stop here. The next uh, step for you to do is to look at the means and conclude from there, right? Because each of these simple effects is comparing two means. Once you're down to that level, when you're just comparing two things together, again, you don't have to do any additional analyses. You simply have to look at the means and conclude males were rating significantly lower compared to females at four pints. At the very end of the practical, I'll go ahead and interpret and conclude for each of these methods. Now, this isn't the only way to perform simple effects analyses. However, if you have a factorial ANOVA and one of your independent variables has two levels, this is the most ideal way to run your simple effects because it's the simplest, it's the easiest to interpret. However, that doesn't necessarily mean that this would make the most sense theoretically. 
in this case, this does certainly make sense to, to interpret it this way and simply state that males and females differ at four pints of alcohol. But depending on your research question, you still might wanna perform the simple effects in the opposite method. So rather than sex at each level of pints, you might want to assess pints at each level of sex. But before we do that, and before I forget, let's go ahead and um, let's go ahead and interpret the rest of this output for um, the pairwise comparison for sex at each level of pints. Remember that I said that some of it um, is actually redundant. Um, that's exactly what we're seeing here. Remember with the command that we used, we told Stata to also print the mean comparisons using a Bonferroni adjustment. So this is basically saying, make all of the possible comparisons based on the simple effects analysis. So let's compare two means together, right? And what this is doing is for each level of pints, we're getting the comparison between female versus base. Now, base here is simply uh, male. Remember from last week when we actually looked at the data in the editor window, we saw that males were represented by a numeric value of zero and females one. Unless stated otherwise, base is always going to be the lowest number. It's also really easy to use process of elimination, especially when you have two levels. So it's just female versus male. Now, whereas above with each of these comparisons, so here we have female versus male at zero, two, and four. Above, we were given an F ratio. For these pairwise comparisons, we're given a T, a T statistic. However, the P values are exactly the same because we're just making a comparison between two means for each of uh, the simple effects and the, uh, the pairwise comparisons. You'll notice that the P using a Bonferroni adjustment here is the same as above. So at zero pints, the P is 0.53, right? Same with the pairwise comparison. And again, for two pints, it's one and one. And for four pints, it's zero or less than 0 0.001. So basically this is uh, redundant information. You would not need to report both of these, uh, both of these p-values. You would just need to report the F ratio and the P above for these simple effects. Now let's go ahead and run the simple effects using the other method. And in doing so, you'll also see how the simple effects will be different than the mean comparisons here. For this method, we want to get pints at each level of sex. So again, this will essentially fit two one-way ANOVAs, which will tell us if there is a significant difference in attractiveness ratings between zero, two, and four pints for males and zero, two, and four pints for females. Okay, and again, we wanna get the mean comparison using a Bonferroni adjustment. This time our simple effects, we have two rows. So for males and females, the degrees of freedom here are two, right? Remember that we're making comparisons for level for pints. We have three levels of pints, which means degrees of freedom is two. Then we have the F ratio and the P value. Even though we did the command exactly the same, we've just flipped around the order of our independent variables. For this example, we're not given a Bonferroni adjusted p-value here, right? So above, we did have a Bonferroni adjusted p, but that's only because we were making a comparison between two means. In this case, this F ratio and associated p-value is comparing three means at the same time. Again, essentially one-way ANOVA, which means if there's a significant p-value, we need to do additional analyses. We'll need to do essentially post hoc analyses for this simple effect. And that's exactly what we're gonna do here. So we can see that the simple effect for males is significant, right? Because p is less than 0.001. On the other hand, and again, not surprising considering the um, considering all of our data visualization today, females do not significantly differ at zero, two, and four pints.
because of the non-significant p-value of 0.55. With these results, in order to actually understand the differences or to be able to interpret, again, we'll have to do additional post hoc analyses using pairwise comparisons. This significant p-value here, again, is simply saying there's some difference between 0, 2, and 4 pints for men only, and we need to know where that difference is before we can actually interpret and conclude. The command as written here will give us partial information. Okay, so we are going to get some of the comparisons, but not necessarily all that we need. So let's really quickly take a look at the pairwise comparisons we have using this command. This time each row will give us the comparison for, um, for two pints versus base and four pints versus base. Again, the base is going to be the lowest value, which in this case is zero pints. And because we have that non-significant simple effect for female, we don't have to interpret them. It would essentially be impossible for that to be significant anyways. So we really only need to look at the comparisons for the male group. We can see here that the comparison between two pints and zero pints for males is non-significant with a T of exactly zero and a P of one. On the other hand, when we compare four pints versus zero pints, it is highly significant, right? We have a significant T statistic with P less than 0 0.001, right? And remember that this contrast column is simply telling us the mean difference. So we can very clearly see here that the mean difference for four versus zero is quite a bit different compared to the mean differences here. In fact, this mean difference is essentially zero. Now, this is really great information. It's really informative. However, it's not giving us all possible information. There's one comparison that's missing here, and that's the comparison between four pints versus two pints for male participants. So we already know that the comparison between four and zero is significant. We need to know if the comparison between four and two is significant. So we'll have to do one additional step further. We're going to use the command pw compare and then our two independent variables, pints hash sex. And again, we want to get the mean comparison using a Bonferroni adjustment. Even though we don't technically need it, this comparison will give us all possible com group comparisons. Again, we already know that there is no significant difference between 0, 2, and 4 pints for females, but we'll still get that information from this output anyways, and that's okay. At this stage, with this many levels of multiple independent variables, we have tons of compar possible comparisons to, to assess. In this example, we actually have 15 possible comparisons with our six cell means. Therefore, Stata organizes this output a little differently compared to what we've seen in the past. And that's simply to avoid 15 rows of output to assess. This time, we're just given one row for each cell. Okay, so we have one row for zero pints male, female, two pints male, female, and four pints male and female. We have the mean and the significance using a Bonferroni adjustment. However, we're not actually given a p-value here. We're simply given letters, and these, lev these letters will tell us which groups or which cells are significantly different from the others. Stata is really nice here because it's actually telling us, um, because it's telling us exactly how to interpret this output, right? In this note here, it states that the margins sharing a letter in the group label are not significantly different at the 5% level. In other words, at P equals 0.05 or alpha equals 0.05. So this simply means that all cells with the same letter A are not significantly different from each other, which really leaves four pints males as the only outsider because it doesn't even have a, a letter identifier. 
Therefore, using a Bonferroni adjustment, males after having four pints of beer are rating attractiveness significantly different compared to all other groups, whether male or female. Now, remember, we're specifically assessing the um, significant, the significant simple effect from above. So really all we would have to interpret is the comparison between males at four pints and males at two pints. That's really the only comparison we needed, but we can see here that this group, males at four pints, are, are uh, assessing attractiveness significantly different from all other groups. So this cell is really what was driving the interaction, as well as that uh, main effect of pints consumed. If you go back to the marginal means for pints, you would see that at four pints, the mean is much different compared to, or much lower, compared to, um, to zero and two pints of alcohol. And that's simply because males are rating much, much lower. Now, again, as I've reiterated throughout this practical, either method of doing the simple effects is perfectly valid. It really depends on what's easiest, as well as what's gonna make the most sense when you're uh, concluding or what makes the most sense in relation to your research questions. So it would be perfectly acceptable to, to do the simple effects for sex at each level of pints. There, you're just comparing two means and you can stop at that stage. Or if it makes more sense theoretically to do pints at each level of sex, even though you have an additional step, it really has to do with what's gonna make, make most sense for you as well as for the reader. All right, so let's go ahead and interpret and conclude these results.